This is Higher Notes, Unit 1, Section 3, Work, Energy and Power. This short section uh, centres around the law of conservation of energy. So, what is the law of conservation of energy? Well, it says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. merely changed from one form into another. The foundational idea in physics there will be no circumstance you've ever come across where energy is destroyed and none where it's created. All we do is we change one form into another. Now a number of equations involving energy will be used in this uh, section. Uh, probably another important idea to have embedded is that of work done. Just to avoid any confusion. So in physics, work is done when energy is transferred. And we mean by that from one body to another. So work is done when energy is transferred from one body to another. And usually when energy is transferred, it changes uh, form. Okay, so for example, if you had very simple circuit powering a lamp there's an energy transformation in the uh, lamp where electrical energy goes to light Now, where does the electrical come from? Well, it comes from the, the battery, of course. And in the battery, you've got chemical becoming the electrical. So in fact, you've got two energy transformations happening here, chemical to electrical in the battery, and then that same electrical becoming light plus heat in the bulb. Now, in both cases, we say that the battery is doing work in converting chemical energy into electrical. And we can also say that the um, bulb is doing work in converting electrical energy into light uh, plus heat. OK, just to give you a sense then of some of the language we're using. Now, there are several equations you're going to use in this section involving energy and work. Work, of course, is measured in joules because it's just the amount of energy transferred from one form into another. Well, you will be using work done is force times distance, where that is the applied force. You'll be using 
gravitational potential energy is mgh. You'll be using kinetic energy is a half mv squared. And finally, you'll be using the power equation, the general power equation. Power is energy over time. Let's do an example. So let's imagine we've got a bench here. And we've got a block. And I lift that block by applying a force to it so that it's um, raised up above the bench. to a certain uh, height, which we'll call uh, h equals 2 meters. Let's imagine the block has a mass of 4 kilograms. And the question would be, um, how much work has been done in lifting the block. Well, the work that's been done in lifting this block transfers energy from the agent doing the lifting into gravitational uh, potential. So we can say then that the work done in lifting the mass equals the gravitational potential energy gained in the lifting. Now that's a word equation. Let's put it into symbols. So work done in lifting the block equals potential energy gained, which of course is mgh. Four kilograms times 9.8 times two meters. So the work done, which is the gravitational potential energy gained, is 4 times 9.8 times 2, giving 78.4 joules of uh, work done. Therefore, that block has gained 78.4 joules by being lifted. So once it's up here, It's got an EP of 78.4 uh, joules. And that's just stored in the system. OK. The mass is released. Now, if the mass is released, so let's just do this over here to the side. then it's going to fall downwards and accelerate under gravity. And just before it hits the ground, it will have accelerated and built up some speed. Its final speed will be V. And at this point, it will have kinetic energy, a half m 
p squared. And in fact, all of the potential energy that the block had when it was high up, the 78.4 joules, will have been transferred into kinetic energy. So you could say that the gravitational field of the Earth is doing work on the block because work is done when energy is transferred and I'm transferring gravitational potential into kinetic here, or at least the gravitational field is. So we can say then that the gravitational potential energy lost equals the kinetic energy gained. Well, the gravitational potential energy to be lost is mgh, and the kinetic energy gained is a half mv squared. Now sometimes when you're doing these problems you'll notice that the, the mass just cancels on each side and sometimes that's quite a useful thing to be able to do. But because we know that the gravitational potential here is 78.4, I'm just going to put that in and leave the mass in because I do know what the mass is. It's the 4 kilograms. So I can work out v squared then, it's 78.4 divided by half times 4. So let's see what that gives us. 78.4 essentially divided by 2. So that gives me 39.2. But it's v I'm looking for, so I need to take the square root of that. And I get 6.3 meters per second. And that's obviously downwards. OK, so there is um, a simple example of how energies are converted from one form um, into another. Let's imagine that the block takes 0 0.64 seconds to fall. What is the power? delivered to the block. Now this power would be delivered by the gravitational field in this case. And we simply use a power is work done divided by time taken. Well, we know that we've done 78.4 joules of work on the block because it started off at rest and it ended up with 78.4 joules of kinetic energy. So that's how much work gravity has done on it. So 78.4 joules of work done. And if we know it takes 0 0.64 seconds, then we can work out the power delivered to the block, the rate of doing work, if you like. And that then turns out to be 123 watts. So bringing the block up to 6.3 meters per second in that amount of time, 0.64 seconds, means that the gravitational field in this case, the agent doing the work, is doing the work at 123 joules each uh, second on average. That's very much an average, of course. Okay, so that is uh, an example of uh, energy conversions. There are many other possible situations that you 
uh, might come across. Probably one that's worth uh, doing as an example would be a car braking example. So let's do example car braking. So the scenario we have here is that we have a car and it's traveling along let's say it's got a mass of a thousand kilograms and it's traveling along at say uh, 15 meters per second okay and the car brakes and therefore decelerates and during that deceleration Travel a certain distance d. Okay. So the dotted line shows where the the car would end up traveling a distance d. Now, obviously, in order to decelerate, there would need to be a braking force applied, some sort of applied force from the brakes. And that braking force has applied itself over a certain distance d. And in fact, the energy transformation here is kinetic. heat because basically a braking force is a frictional force and friction always generates heat so every joule of kinetic energy ultimately becomes one joule of heat energy and once the last joule of kinetic energy has been transferred to heat then there is no more kinetic energy left and the car comes to rest okay so the question would be <clears throat> um, Let's imagine that the car comes to rest in a distance of 40 metres. The question then is, what braking force would be required to achieve this? Okay. Well, the energy transformation is kinetic uh, to heat. The brakes are doing work by transferring kinetic energy into heat. We know the equation for kinetic energy. It's a half m v squared. Um, but we know that the brakes are doing work, so that braking force is doing work, which is force times distance. So there's our equation. So the only unknown is the uh, f, we know everything else. So we've got a half times a thousand kilograms uh, times 15 squared. Don't forget to square the V, my common mistake. A braking force, the applied force, opposing the motion of the car, of course, times 40 metres, because the brakes are applying themselves over a distance of 40 metres. Don't calculate anything until you get to the final lines, just leave all the numbers in. So a half times 1,000 15 squared divided by 40. Notice I've not worked out the top line. I don't want to do any intermediate uh, rounding. Let's just do it all in a one or at the end so you need to be skillful on your calculator. So 0 0.5 that's a half times 1000 times 15 squared Get that and then divide it by 40. And you get 2810 newtons. So, quite a big braking force required to stop the car.
And that brings us to the end of work, energy and power 1.3.